I'm John Vogel. I'm a research molecular biologist here at the USDA Agricultural Research Service in Albany, California. Brachypodium is a small grass that's native to the Mediterranean area and the reason that we're, we're interested in it is that it has a lot of attributes uh, or qualities that really make it easy to work with in the laboratory and so a lot of people are developing it and using it as a model system. We're using it as a model for bioenergy crops. For example, um, things like uh, switchgrass and miscanthus are grasses, perennial grasses, that have the potential to provide a lot of uh, our nation's fuel, but the, the process of converting that grass into fuel is far from optimized. And if we had a much greater uh, understanding of the basic biology of grasses, um, we could use that knowledge to, to accelerate the development of these new, these new biomass crops. And, and that's really one of the strengths of using brachypodium. So really, this is sort of a interesting time in, in, in my laboratory because we're now shifting focus from essentially developing tools that will allow everybody to use Brachypodium as a model system to actually using it to answer some of the questions that we're interested in. And my lab is completely focused on, on bioenergy um, and biofuels, and so we're interested in things like uh, the cell wall composition, and we're looking at cell walls, we let the plants grow up, senesce, and then we're just looking at these stems and we'll look at cell wall composition using different different things. Um, but you can see you can fit a lot of plants in one thing. These plants are made of uh, essentially uh, long polymers of sugars and some other compounds uh, like lignin in the cell wall and there's probably over a thousand genes that contribute to cell wall composition. And so by using brachypodium, we can study large numbers of mutants. That is, we can alter genes and knock them out and decrease their activity, and then look for mutations that change cell wall composition. And we can also look in natural accessions. So, you know, we can look at uh, lines of brachypodium that have been collected from different geographic areas and compare the cell wall composition between those two groups. Uh, we now have sequences from representatives of the three most economically important uh, grass groups. There's a group that contains rice and there's a group that contains sorghum uh, as well as switchgrass and miscanthus and then there's the group that contains brachypodium also contains wheat, barley and a lot of the uh, temperate grains and, and forage grasses. And so by having the sequences of three representatives we can do a number of things. One, see how the genomes have changed through, through evolutionary time and also we can enable researchers uh, to more rapidly identify genes in other species that have not been sequenced to figure out what might be in your unknown region.